This video is going to be a film study exploration of the jet sweep concept, something I've seen multiple teams run or at least threaten to run in the NFL during the preseason. I'll also relate it to regular season film from the last two or three years. This will have Lions offensive film, Ravens offensive film, Chiefs offensive film from previous seasons, as well as the Rams. The jet sweep concept is something that threatens horizontally immediately. Now, it's kind of an inverted option concept, even though there is no read. It's a it's a pre-snap call, meaning the, the offense coordinator has given a play call and everyone knows who's getting the football on the jet or the jet dive, which I'll show you that complimentary play in a moment. Not really going to talk about play action passes here, but I'll use this to illustrate when, where, and, and even maybe why teams run the jet sweep in a, in a particular area of the field and what makes it so difficult to stop. This one's actually going back to 2022. Early in the season, I think week two, Lions run a jet sweep to Iman Ross St. Brown. Goes for 58 yards, nearly goes for a touchdown. They also ran it later on in the game. Really brilliant usage in this situation because Ben Johnson got evidence that the play was going to work, plus 58 yards. Then they saved this until this concept until a third and 12, third and 13, something like that, and ran a jet sweep on it with about a minute and 20 left in the game, maybe a minute 10, something like that. And that I'm in Ross St. Brown on the jet sweep on that situation went for like nine or 10 yards. And then he made the catch to convert or close out the game on the ensuing fourth and three. But the jet sweep puts the edge defender in conflict. You've got immediate horizontal threat to him. In, in other words, a running back or receiver crossing his face in the wing tee will be called a wing back run concept away from him. Additional his key, the right tackle, is taking him down, meaning he's going in that direction, and you usually want to execute what's called block down, step down. So if your key, the right tackle, Penny Sewell, steps down, you usually want to match that. You want to go in this direction. And 90 does that just enough. Again, we're talking about 2022 film that St. Brown's able to run around the edge. Additional to that, the man-to-man -man defender going with St. Brown is being blocked on a, on a pseudo crack by the X receiver. His man, who's guarding him, is, is moving with him as well to reflect that because it's man-to-man -man coverage. So brilliant play call against man-to-man -man coverage. Last thing about this one, where is it run? Ball is on the right hash. It's run down here into the boundary, the short side of the field. Why? Because the Lions have trips up here, and that is the nickel defender. So they're running this away from the nickel defender, really isolating the boundary side edge player, not from a read option standpoint, but from a play call standpoint one that, in fact, puts him in similar conflict like an option sequence would. Getting to the 2024 film, this is week two, the Lions offense against the Chiefs. Going to be a jet sweep into the boundary. Now, this is 12 personnel, so you've got a different match in terms of how the Chiefs are trying to defend it. I believe you have their base defense on the field. And this is one of their three inside linebackers rolled up into the tight end's face, basically creating an under front, although they technically are in a three and a one. So it's an under front with the one and three on the wrong side. This is the strong safety rolled up to the field. This is a corner, a corner, and then free safety in the middle of the field. Those free safety and strong safety delineations can change from snap to snap. Isaiah Williams, undrafted free agent, trying to make the team out of Illinois, running the jet. Presumably the dive off of it in the opposite direction here. Up to the top side of the screen, both tight ends are reaching, meaning both tight ends are getting out in space to the boundary, and they're isolating the boundary side DNs, basically saying you're not going to make the tackle on this unless you're wildly stepping away from your responsibility or what your key is doing. <clears throat> Later on, same game. This one's very clean. I think it's Tom Kennedy. On the sweep from Hendon Hooker, so you've got a different receiver, Kennedy, as opposed to Isaiah Williams, and a different quarterback. So what's that tell you? The Lions are practicing this a lot, obviously. If two different quarterbacks and two different receivers practice it, then that's what they, they're doing. And this, the only difference here is this is 11 personnel, so one tight end on the field, three receivers. So that means the nickel defender is to the field, two high safety alignment. If you're not going to spin down here or rotate at all in, with the coverage, you're going to have difficulty stopping this play.
One more time from the All-22. Again, the back is typically going to be stepping opposite of the jet sweep. Why do I say it's an inverted option? Well, you do have three choices here from a from a sequential standpoint. You've got the jet, which we see. You've got the dive opposite of it. We'll see two examples of that here in a moment. And then, theoretically, third option could be fake the jet, fake the dive, quarterback kick back to throw. I will show some Rams film here in a moment, but I will not show one of the play-action passes they run out of it. There's multiple that they do run. In this instance, comparing them to the, the Lions and then the Ravens and the Chiefs, the, the Rams would major in this series. These other teams, it's only a minor for them. Last thing to note here, boundary side tight end, boundary side defensive end. Here's the boundary side tight end, 84. I think it's Zilstra, if I'm saying his name correctly. He's going to arc release. And then what that does is it gives this defensive end a whole lot to deal with. <clears throat> his interior key, the left tackle, Sanu, is working this way, like all of the offensive linemen are. They're all working that way. But he's got an arc release by the tight end and a back, or in this case, a receiver, crossing his face. So he has a lot going on, a lot of, quote, eye candy. Does he follow his key, Sanu? Yes, he does. He steps down. And as a result, he's moved himself out of position for the Jet. It happens so fast. I've coached against it before. The teams that execute it, you can almost watch them and not even know who gets the ball until you see someone run around the edge. It's a, it's a dangerous play to deal with, and it's no fun. All right, this is a slightly anomalous version of it. This is a second and seven. Credit to the to Ram the Rams for calling this on second and seven, and they're actually running this to the field. So it's eleven personnel because the Rams are always in eleven personnel, and they're actually running this to the side of the nickel. Kyle Hamilton is lined up slightly deeper than you would normally see him as a nickel. Man to man coverage. So Marlon Humphrey's going with the motion. And it's a great job up top by I think the right tackle. And Cooper Cup. Those guys do a nice job generally of this type, this type of stuff. Cup is just chipping 50 for a moment, Calvin Noy, such that he allows the right tackle to take him over. Cup is then going to move up to the safety, who also is impeded slightly by, I think that's Tutu Atwell, who kind of stepped up field for a moment and then juts inside to pick up Hamilton. So you end up with basically... Two people who put their hands on Van Noy. Two people who put their hands on Kyle Hamilton. Not, not really a double team, but a intentionally timed or staggered blocking scheme, the way that it works out at least. They don't have to block the field side defensive tackle because you're generally going to get those guys responding to their key, the guard. In this case, six-yard gain for Puka Nakua. I think first possession creates a third and one. <clears throat> Back to typical usage of it, uh, into the boundary, behind a tight end. So 11 personnel. Clean from Mahomes, and you can see Jarek McKinnon stepping this way. 83 arc released outside of the D end. Brown is going to get the D end. Tells you how good DJ Reader is. He's um, well, he's letting the, the he's letting one of the linemen cross his face, the guard. So I don't like that. But he's actually involved in the tackle to the boundary. Uh, he's extremely talented de defensive tackle against the run. The Chiefs, as an aside, in 2021, they had this concept. They had this concept into the boundary, out of 11 personnel, all they wanted. I think they ran it. I'm talking about the game they lost at home to the Bengals in the 2021 AFC Championship game. I think they ran this three times into the boundary that year for a, a total of 27 yards, all with Nicole Hardman. 2022, you can see they're running it here again. Didn't need it as much. I thought they, you know, definitely. Uh, I thought they definitely took over in the second half of that game from an offensive standpoint. Even though the Bengals do a nice job, did a nice job for those two years defending them. Now you got the jet, and then the dive off of it. Notice the jet is to the field. It's not every iteration where, you know, jet to the boundary equals they're handing it off to the jet, and jet to the field equals it's jet dive. Dive is going to be opposite of it. Same flavor of blocking scheme as some of the other jet stuff. Kolar is releasing outside of the outside linebacker. I think it's Jalex Hunt, who does a nice job of stepping up and then folding down inside. But his key is going away from him, just like all these offensive linemen are working to this side. 
Rasheen Ali is going to take it behind the offensive lineman and then kind of try to bend it downhill. And Hunt folds inside. So that's the secondary play off of the jet and then the dive. It's been a fruitful concept for the Ravens to use. I don't know how many other teams use this repeatedly. I know the Ravens do. Certainly, I would expect them to use it with Derrick Henry. It worked like a charm last year, particularly out of 11 personnel. Same exact setup in some ways as the previous play. You got the jet to the field. Zay Flowers, it's 11 personnel. There's the tight end. And you can see, as I pause it here in a moment, that you've got two defenders running out of position. This guy doesn't know if Flowers has the ball or not. Could also be man coverage, so he's running with him. The defensive end to that side is left unblocked. They're running the zone away from him. And Justice Hill cuts it up underneath. Huge gain in week four. Really exploited the Browns' defense with uh, some of these run concepts against man. You've actually subtracted two DBs out of here. This was the free safety who rolled down. <clears throat> nickel defender to the field because it was 11 personnel, so they had their 4-2-5 personnel on the field. Huge gain up the middle for Justice Hill. Organically created by the scheme, you can tell that you would have the play action boot play action off of it. You can also tell the teams that really major in it because their quarterbacks are going to get back here and they're going to run the play action fake, meaning they're either going to boot out, make it look like they have the football, or they're going to check up here into an actual pass drop, make it look like they still have the football and they're attempting to throw, just to hold defenders a little bit longer. Not criticizing the quarterbacks who don't do it. Point is, the teams that only minor in it don't get as much of a play fake after the, the handoff. Final iteration of this jet, and then a handoff to the running back. You've got a dive, but it's with the motion. So, so far, the ones that I have illustrated, also noticed Stafford with you know a little bit more uh, carrying out his fake Nobody's with him, so it has no impact on this play necessarily. But you have the jet. Normally the jet is going one way, and the dive is opposite. So I would call this jet follow, meaning there's a jet motion by Nakua, and then the running back is receiving the ball in the same direction as the jet motion. Additional to that, Cooper Cup is folding back the other way. So I think what they're trying to do is I think they're trying to see if the nickel defender will go with him. And in this case, it's Kyle Hamilton. He does not. He's not involved in the tackle. I think it's Justin Matabike. Had a brilliant season in 2023. Makes a tackle for a three-yard game. Stafford carrying out his fake a, a little bit longer than maybe the previous play, but you can see he's still looking to see what happened, just like Lamar was. It's, it's natural um, instinct. Those guys spend so much time on so many different concepts and so many different formations and plays. I can't blame them for not carrying out their fake sometimes, but you saw with the um, example of Lamar handed off to Justice Hill, all you got to do is hold that DN for a split second longer, and it just creates a little bit longer running lane for the tailback to get through. This is my look at the jet sweep series. Again, we're not looking at play complementary play action plays. I've shown you three concepts here. The actual jet sweep, like you see here with St. Brown on the 58-yard gain. The jet and then the dive opposite, opposite the flow, opposite the motion. And then the jet follow that I think the Rams do a spectacular job of running in their sequence-based offense. I enjoy watching the jet. I did not enjoy coaching against it. You, your players would say, we don't know who has the ball. Very simple. One thing that we did, among, among others, uh, with a JV group two years in a row, was we would practice against the jet without a ball. It sounds very simplistic, and, and you sometimes do that against option teams because you're trying to see if your guys are going to go to their responsibility or if they're going to say, I thought that guy had the ball. So he didn't do it every every period, you know, the entire week when we were facing some of these teams. Because, again, the, just like in the NFL, some of the teams that run jet sweep, they also ran the wing tee. So there was other sequential-based series that they ran, particularly buck sweep, trap, and waggle. And so that practicing without a ball time period was such that you were forcing your kids, your players, to react to their key and not the ball. In the NFL, they actually spend so much time with linebackers, DBs, and safeties telling them to look in the backfield where the quarterback has the ball that in some of these situations, these old-school concepts like this one, I think can really exploit that tendency. You guys let me know if you appreciate the conceptual videos like this. I have two others that are maybe prepared for later in the week. I'm really in the mindset to do previews for 
the Ravens, Chiefs in week one, and the Lions, Rams in week one Sunday night in Detroit. You guys let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. If you think other football fans in general would enjoy this explanation, uh, maybe surface-level explanation of the Jet Sweep concept, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.